Hello, everyone. I'm June Garber, and I would like to tell you a little about my ride on life's carousel. It started in South Africa in 1949. Oh my, where did the time go? Sadly, my father died in a plane crash when I was just three years old. And a three-year-old doesn't really know what this means at the time. But I'm often sad that I didn't get to know him. If he had lived, I think my singing career would have started much earlier. You see, I found out years later from a stranger that he was a jazz drummer, and I know he would have encouraged me. As it was, I wasn't allowed to sing as a child other than to entertain at family gatherings. But I knew what I wanted to do. When I was all of four years old, one day I packed my little suitcase and left home. Well, it was just two blocks. But for me, seated on a neighbor's lawn, I was in Hollywood. Instead of the bright lights, I became a teacher. And my only singing and acting in those days was limited to college and university productions. In 1975, I emigrated to Canada, leaving a country whose geography I loved. It was so beautiful, but whose politics of apartheid was simply abhorrent to me. By 1977, living in Toronto, I could contain myself no longer and put my toe into the sea of entertainment. A new ride! I answered a classified ad and landed a job as a backup singer in a small band. Not too much later, I formed my own group, and it was called Angel Fever. I cringe a bit now at the name, but it seemed okay at the time. We were an eight-piece band and even managed to crack the U.S. market, We played long engagements in Las Vegas and Atlantic City, as well as in Toronto, and we toured to multiple cities and small towns in the U.S. and Canada. The touring took its toll, and around, I think, 1983, I stepped away from the Angels and turned instead to my other love, acting. I was privileged to work with some wonderful companies, and several great Canadian actors in productions like Firing Francine at the Tarragon Theatre, Neil Simon's The Last of the Red Hot Lovers, and musicals Pal Joey, Guys and Dolls, and Sweet Charity. What a wonderful time that was. In 1990, I got off that ride and left the fairground for 10 years. I didn't sing and I didn't act. But I did satisfy my creative urges with some painting and my garden. Oh, how I loved my garden. It was my other world, my magic kingdom. I miss it to this day. But the memories are etched in my heart and with me forever. After my hiatus, the urge returned. I set my sights on becoming a jazz singer. And off I went on my next exhilarating ride, holding down a full-time job, mind you, along the way. In 2005, I released Smile, my first jazz album, and followed that with Here's to You in 2008. I was having fun again with the new genre and meeting such wonderful and supportive musicians. There are too many to mention them all. But I have to say a special thanks here to Mark Kieswetter. He helped me find my voice again after a personal crisis in 2013. And to George Kohler, who with Mark produced my third album, This I Know, in 2016. And of course, the indefatigable James B. His zaniness, his cup that's never half full, but always overflowing, his belief in me. And his endless next ideas have been a constant since we first met in 2002. 
I can't thank him enough for his love and support. I may have been a late starter for my jazz career, but the past 20 years have been such a gift. And the biggest gift is being able to connect with live audiences. There have been more gigs, large and small, in Canada and in Florida and other cities on the continent than I can possibly remember. The release concert for this I know is one of my treasured memories. On your love, underneath the jacaranda tree. And in 2018, I was so proud of Sisters in Song, a joint project with Lorraine Clarsen, where we celebrated our South African heritage. And now, in 2021, I'm releasing Off the Carousel. Its meaning is intentionally mysterious, perhaps because I'm not even sure what to make of it. Does it mean that there are no more rides for me? I hope not. Am I simply changing rides as I have done so many times before? Maybe. Or maybe I really do like this because it has deep and true meaning for me. I'm welcoming young performers onto the ride. I want them to experience the exhilaration of the ride, to learn to cope with the ups and downs, to be thrilled, even to be scared sometimes. All the songs on the album have a special meaning for me. They reflect some aspects of my life. Love and heartbreak. Joy and sorrow. But above all, it's been fun. And I think I'm looking for the next ride. The album was produced and beautifully arranged by Lou Pamanti. See that other person in the photo? He's the reason I'm doing this album. I can't even explain how much he has loved and supported me throughout our time together. I love you, Brian Hemming. I hope you enjoy the album. <laughs>